Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. Today I'll be doing another video on my 2021 Camaro ZL1, which is a six gen Camaro. If you've been following my other channels, pretty much doing a lot of uh, interior and exterior modifications. And for today, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the GM Spectrum Lighting Footwell Kit. This actually uh, links into your uh, Spectrum wiring that you already have. So this kit will only apply to the cars that have spectrum lighting and uh usually that's the two ss's and the zl1 zl1 one le's i'm not sure if it's an option you can add on the one ss or any of the other cars it might be uh but for sure with the zl1 so i have the lighting that's in the uh around the door trim and the cup holders around the radio and uh you know around a few other places and this actually will add the synced in rgb effects to your footwell instead of just the plain white uh, lighting really you would think with how much these cars are, uh, this would be a pretty much a factory thing, but these are actually, even if you order this from GM, uh, when you order your car, this is an actually a dealer installed item. So once the car gets to the dealer from the factory, they actually have a dealer tech will install this. I didn't uh, go that route. I actually picked this up off of eBay. They're actually getting hard to find now. Um, I'm not sure if they're discontinued or just uh, like everything low stock, but what we're gonna go do is we're gonna go ahead and get this thing installed uh, into the car. I've heard it's um, not a hard install, but it's a physically demanding install just because you have to be a uh, uh, super flexible, uh, maybe a gymnast to get underneath the dash, especially over on the passenger side. And um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into this and then we're gonna swing around and take a look. Here is what comes in the kit uh, that you order. I believe it's real hard to order this from GM and actually a number of different sites are out of stock. I was able to grab this off of eBay at a pretty decent price. Only negative, it's supposed to come with some kind of installation instructions. Mine did not. Um, so I'm going to have to just go on a, some forums and some posts that I've seen. And I believe I did see a, a kind of a quick overview of an install. This is hopefully going to be a little bit more in depth, maybe be able to see everything a little bit better, but I guess we'll find out at the end. Um, so this is what you get. You have a harness here. And what you're going to do is you're going to be plugging in on or tapping in on the passenger side and you're going to route it, this cord right here, this, this connector um, underneath your center console to your passenger footwell. And then you're going to in, end up installing these little RGB lights and these will snap in and then this plug will plug in here. And then uh, you have another plug that's going to plug here for the other one. And then you're going to have to tap in to a connector underneath the passenger side. I'll show you that. And you're going to have to just pretty much just press these pins in. It's going to provide the power and the spectrum signal to both sides of your footwell lighting. So we're going to go ahead and get in the car. I'll give you a quick um, tour of, of what's underneath your dash. And then we'll go ahead and hopefully successfully install this thing that I've been putting off for a while. Here we are in the passenger side of the car, as you can tell, footwell, and then all my beautiful interior carbon fiber that I have done. Check out the playlist up here if you're interested in the carbon fiber, any of the Alcantara, like these knee pads and uh, everything. But what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be actually syncing up with the spectrum lighting, as you can see here in the door panel um, around the radio, cup holders and all that fun stuff. And really to start this, you're definitely gonna need some lighting, maybe a mirror, and probably wanna lay down a nice microfiber, thick microfiber towel or, or cloth to protect this area because you're probably gonna be leaning over it and moving around. And uh, to really start it off, you're gonna have to remove this under tray. It's kind of underneath the glove box. You can see the factory uh, default footwell lighting, just a white plain light, no color to it. Actually behind is where we're gonna be hooking the 
spectrum footwell lighting uh, lens. It's going to be in that little rectangular cutout right here. It's going to go right there. Now, to get these this lower tray off, you're going to have two front bolts, two rear bolts. The front bolts are kind of in these little notches. You're going to have to feel around. I believe they're seven millimeter. You're going to have two here, and there's two kind of hidden in the back. Um, up where it kind of indents up into the car. You're going to have to really feel around with a mirror to find that. I can't really show it on the camera because it just the angle is so kind of crazy. And, uh, yeah, it's real awkward back there. But uh, maybe I can show a picture. I'll paste it in here, uh, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully here, if I can get a good picture to show you what I'm talking about. And I'm going to have to go ahead and remove these four bolts. Make sure you do all four. Some people only could find three, but they are four. Seven millimeter, I believe. I'll double check when I come back. I'm gonna remove those off camera. We'll take a look and then I'll see if I can drop that piece down. Here is the under tray underneath the glove box drop down. It is the four seven millimeter uh, screws. And real quick, they look like this. Be very careful on the back ones because you can drop it. Give you some lighting and back in that carpet gap, which I did, and then you're gonna have to pull the carpet back a little bit and uh, go fishing. Thankfully, I was able to grab it. No, not a big deal. Now, here is the uh, top of the tray. So once it drops down, it actually you're gonna have to do a little force. It'll pop out. Um, uh, I guess with clips or something. I'm not sure what holds it up there. Um, but uh, yeah, once you uh, pop it out, you have to push down, kind of pry it down. It'll pop out, and then I'll show you. Here is the one of the front uh, where the screw holes go through. Here's the other one, and you can see back here, uh, right over there, uh, you can see one of the other screws, and then right here, you can see another one of the screws. So gonna give you a frame of reference on where all these things are located. Now that we have this lower cover drop down, go ahead and open up the glove box. My setup's a little bit different because I do have my iVolt battery pack in here, which is for my dash cam. So I'm gonna have to unplug that you won't have to worry about this unless you have the same setup and we're also going to want to pop out this side trim piece and it should just unclip and pull out i'll go ahead and remove that and then we're going to want to actually drop down this entire glove box um, itself like remove it from the dash so pretty much just grab it give it some good amount of force and you can see here these little clips don't break any of them um, that would be disappointing and uh, yeah it's just uh Five clips, pops straight out kind of this way and this way, and then you can remove this. And you won't have all this. I have a ton of wiring wedged in here. Uh, this is from my dash cam and uh, a bunch of excess wiring, so don't worry about that. And next up, we're gonna go ahead and drop this glove box. We're gonna need to remove these hinge pins. I've already partially pulled this one out right here. And if you look at the door, you can see where the uh, hinge is right here. And so the pen goes through there to hold uh, the door in place. There's one on the same uh, angle over here. And just use a flathead or uh, or something you can wedge in there and just kind of, you wanna pry it uh, out. I just use this flathead here. You can kind of go straight through the bottom, tuck it underneath the lip, and then you just kind of wedge it out. I'm gonna go ahead and get both of these pens out real quick. Got both the pins out, as you can see here, the glove box is dropped down to my floor. And uh, for this left one, you can actually go from the uh, inside and push it this way to get it started, and then you can get it out that way. Uh, I found that to be a little bit easier. And then once you get both pins down, and you actually can drop this glove box down, it will be tethered with this little, um, I guess this is the slow drop, so, you know, smooth drop. Uh, cord or whatever and just kind of latches into this little hole here and then of course you can see the extra wiring here You won't have that unless you have the same setup as me. I have this iVolt battery pack Go ahead and move that out of the way and what We're trying to get access to you can kind of See it maybe Maybe not there's a black box Right, yeah, right here. And we're gonna need to get that access to that where the connector is. We're gonna be tapping into that connector. So we're gonna go ahead and probably need to access it from this side. So I'm gonna have to clear out some of my wiring out of the way and then we'll take a look. I moved my dash cam wiring out of the way. 
You can see here there's a little plastic clip here. You can reach around from the inside and push up and unsnap this little black box. It comes undone. There's a clip on both sides. You want to unsnap both of those. A little bit easier with two hands, but let's see if I can get it. And yeah, I'm gonna have to use both hands for it, but uh, yeah, you wanna wanna unsnap both of these and then we're gonna push it out and take it out through the now open uh, glove box. All right, so you can't really get much movement because the cord is so short, but uh, you can just wanna go ahead and get a little flathead screwdriver or something, push on that little gray tab. It's gonna be in this hole right here on the box. You can see right here. And then just kind of lift up and it'll pop the box out. Move that out of the way because we're going to be actually wanting to uh, use this connector. So uh, maybe move it to a little bit more accessible location like right here. And then we can do what we need to do to get the uh, harness pinned in for this. Here is the uh, actual harness for the uh, lighting kit here. And uh, we kind of briefly went over this, but here a little bit more detail. Uh, you can see here there is uh, one side that has pretty much the wire split up into three uh, parts to get a power wire ground wire and then I guess it's the signal wire the signal wire is the one you're gonna have to actually uh, tap into the uh, connector that's in here under the uh, under the passenger side dash and then we're gonna actually have to then use these little um, I guess they give you some kind of banana looking plugs or tap plugs to tap these into uh, the actual uh, power and ground wire that's also on that uh, connector harness and then this wire uh, which is you're going to have a closer wire off that end with a plug on it this is actually going to go to the the lens on the passenger side and then you're going to have a longer strand of wire that runs to another connector for the driver's side uh, light harness or light lens so what we're going to do is we're going to have to run it up through the, the opening here in the uh, dash we, that we have access to here, you're going to run it behind the console into the footwell area uh, of the driver's side. Now you may need to use some kind of uh, uh, you know metal hanger or a wire guide of some sort if you have one to feed it through. Just do it carefully so you don't get it bound up or you don't end up you know getting it stuck in there or damaging the connector. And so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and find kind of a best route. Probably going to go, um, you know, somewhere down above that panel that I dropped down and then feed it like this into the driver's side. Just make sure you do feed the long strand connector versus trying to do the shorter one that's next to the other uh, cable ends. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to see if I can feed this through. Apologize for the uh, wind noise. I have my fan running. It is 104 degrees today. So need a little bit of airflow. Otherwise, I'm going to pretty much fall out here on my garage floor. But anyways, I have part of the cable ran from the harness. And what I did is I fed it up through the bottom here. There's a little kind of a hole you can work. And I ran it to the upper little area right here. Let's see if I can show you some light maybe. And kind of where the box sits when it's connected and where the connector will be will be over in this general area and then since I have the connector kind of going through here just make sure you don't accidentally run it like this because it's gonna have to tuck back in there so uh, once I get it lined up I'm gonna put the connector back through and then hook the stuff up that way now I have one of those little um, snake things where you push the little in and it opens up the arms but since it's just me I can't reach my arm all the way around to manipulate it I just push this snake thing through from the driver's side, taped the connector on right here. And then if we circle around, and I was able to just uh, kind of see it right here, push it through, and then hopefully, if I can get it to come back with the connector in place. So I'm gonna have to use two hands and I'll see if I can get this all the way through and get my connector on this side. All right, I just had to give it a little bit of a uh, Hulk, Hulk power, and I was able to pull it through, nothing broke. Here is the connector taped to the end of this. And as mentioned, this is one of those little grippy arm things, but I couldn't use that since it was just me. And uh, 
yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get this untaped. I'm gonna get the other lens and then we'll look about hooking up the driver side real quick. Underneath the driver side instrument cluster and whatnot, and you, know, you can see the pedals here, and you can see a block of connectors plugged in. Directly behind those connectors, you can see that circular uh, lighting. That's the that's the the traditional, just the white footwell lighting. And if you look right, it's kind of hard to see. But right next to it is a rectangular cutout. See that right there? Um, can't really point to it, but it's right, right over there. Now that is where you're going to plug in your uh, spectrum lighting RGB lens. It's going to go right, in, it's going to snap into that. You want the connector side to be uh, pointed that way. And then here is my connector. I'm going to run that kind of a just make sure you run it so it's not entangling on your on your pedals or anything and i'm going to run that to over here and then we're going to go ahead and plug that in so we're going to come back here and once i get that hooked up and i'll show you what i'm talking about harness is plugged in but i'd real quick show you i they give you a, a number of zip ties so i added one right there when it comes out uh right here i've zip tied it to a, to a connector just to keep it up and out of the way. I don't want it to fall on your feet. I kind of tucked it um, kind of between the vent here and this piece of trim piece. And then, uh, get some better lighting here. I actually swing it out uh, here and then went above this uh, harness here, zip tied it to the top of that. And then you see here, it's plugged in Real careful with putting this uh, lens in. There is a, a, a harness right behind it that might push the lens back out. You might want to kind of just kind of finesse that out of the way, the harness a little bit, get that snap in. And then the connector just uh, snaps into that. And then just make sure you got nothing that's gonna come loose. You don't want a wire to fall uh, you know, on your foot or something like that. Just make sure you use whatever zip ties you need to clean it up. And I think we're pretty good on the driver's side overall. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and swing back to the passenger side and uh, finish up with uh, the wiring of the harness, the actual power ground and the signal wire. So back at the uh, connector that we're gonna be uh, uh, utilizing. And when you look at it like, like this, with the little wings kind of pointing down on each side, the top right is one, you count to the left, one to nine, and then 10 to 18. We're going to be tapping in on pin two, which is a red one for our red wire uh, from the harness. Pin 18 will be the ground, which is gonna be over here. And then pin 16 is where we're actually going to push this actual pin from the harness into the back of uh, the connector. As you can see, it looks like pin two is the red and maybe brown, second red, there's two red ones. It's the second red one when you're looking at the back on the top and the pin 18 is ground which is the bottom right if you're looking at the back and what i'm going to be using is i have these uh nice uh t-taps here uh these did not come in the kit i just have some from a previous project and uh, i'm going to be using these these are pretty easy you just uh clamp the end piece over uh the wire that you want to uh you know take a uh, take a connection from and then you're uh piece right here from the harness this one will actually go on the end and then you just clamp it down with some combination pliers to squeeze it down and then boom you have a connection they give you these i'm not a huge fan of these and they're kind of clunky i figure this will make give me a little bit more room and look a little bit nicer uh, but yeah personal preference i'll have a link for for this if you do want to go with these they're pretty nice and uh and then the, yeah and here's the pin it's going to go into pin 16 you just press it in and then you should be good to go i'm going to go ahead and uh tap these in and then I'll show you what we're looking at and just make sure when you run your harness it's going to be going with with the connector don't have this coming up from some weird angle somewhere and then when you actually push the harness back in and then install the the box <laughs> you're going to have you don't want to have wire like over uh, lapping anywhere in here because this is where the glove box is going to be doing its uh, motion went ahead and added the uh, signal wire pin it took me a minute to figure this out and I actually broke the stupid tab it looks like but you need to lift out this little tab 
and mine's broken now but uh, <laughs> and then this piece will slide out to unlock the pins if you don't slide this out this will only go halfway then you can push your pin in here in pin 16 make sure it clicks and locks in place you want to then snap this back and then close this little thing i'm gonna have to add um, a little piece of tape or something on this bad boy to hold it in place because yeah i was trying to pry and i, I didn't realize it just <laughs> i was trying to go this way it goes this way so if you have the same issue pull this up a little bit don't break it slide it to the left just far enough to clear your pin add it in there i'm gonna go ahead and t-tap into the ground and power now I have the T-taps in, uh, ground on the black wire at pin 18, and then power on the red-brown wire pin 2, and of course earlier the pin connector pushed in to the connector. I did wrap a little bit of the Tesla tape uh, around the connector just so this thing doesn't slide back off since I did kind of damage the, the little snap piece. Uh, so yeah, and I actually had a little bit of Tesla tape here as well to kind of just tie in the connectors now we're going to go ahead and get the other lens i believe it snaps in right at that vertical cutout right here so we're gonna have to snap it in there pretty much push it through the front you want to lift your connector end where the connector plugs in uh, you have to lift push it through from the bottom and then it'll snap in and then we can hook this connector here right there uh, to the lens once it's in place and then I'm going to have to just uh, clean up the wiring route it and kind of tuck it out of the way use some of the provided zip ties just to clean this up and here is the lens I snapped it in uh, pretty much you just uh, push it in from underneath with the connector upwards and then you kind of just um, lift the connector over the lip and then you can snap the lens in place and then uh, plug in the wiring harness connector and you can see i kind of ran it this way you can clip in that lens either direction i went this way uh just because i didn't want the wire potentially going it off in front of one of these i guess the vent holes right here so i went this way tucked the wires back there used a zip tie to hold it in place and you can see everything runs up here and then you may notice in your box you hit received a number of these these are zip tie anchors you attach this to a flat point and then you can run a, a zip tie through either direction and then use this to anchor your zip tie to. I used one right there and that's really the only one I really needed. Um, I was able to attach my wiring um, harness to different you know cables nearby with a zip tie so uh, not a big deal. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this box plugged back in and then up back into its little clips here and then we can test if this thing worked before I put everything back together and find out something's wired wrong. Box is clipped back in place and you can see here the connector is snapped back in and the trick you want to do is you kind of want to put the box without the connector uh, up over this opening up here snap it in it's kind of a pain and then you want to then press in the connector cannot really fit the box through this bottom hole with the connector on and wedge it up there is just uh, not a good fit. So we're going to go ahead and get in the driver's seat real quick and see if the lighting works or not. Here we are. The car is running so I could just simulate with the just the spectrum footwell lighting. If you have the car door open or closed and the car not started, you'll also have the entry white lights in the footwells lit up so it makes it hard to see. It's not a super bright glow. It's supposed to just give you a little accent um, so it's not distracting while you're driving. But uh, so you can see the glow here. And if you want to check out my lovely feet down here, a wash in a red glow. And then, uh, you know, if I switch modes, which I have my stuff linked to for color, you can see that, you know, now it's a orangey color for track. And then if I go to a uh, touring, now you got the beautiful blue here, here here to match everything else it's all in sync i didn't have to do anything special uh, now if you're coming from a car without spectrum lighting and you did the full kit door everything there is a process to actually um, upgrade or flash your radio to implement the spectrum lighting stuff but since this is el one i think 2ss as well and any ones that come with spectrum lighting from the factory adding the footwell no additional program required that's why we're tying into the uh, spectrum lighting uh, control box and everything runs and looks great. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this bad boy back off. And uh, you can see now the um, entry exit lighting comes on, but you do have your spectrum lighting still on there, but the white light will override it pretty much. You won't really see your spectrum lighting in the full wells because the white light is so much brighter. Um, so it's really for while you're cruising or if you're doing like a show thing or something like that, and you just wanna show off the lighting without the entry and exit lights. Now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back together. Uh, I'll cover any of, the, any of the sticky points here, but the first thing we need to do is get this glove box uh, back in place. And then uh, once, we got the, once we have the glove box back together, I'm gonna actually have to plug in my iVolt battery pack for my dash cam. And then we're going to have to uh, raise up that lower panel. And then the four Troublemaker screws are just total pain to hook up. Hopefully they go in fine. And, uh, and make sure we put the cap on the end of the, end of the console back in. And then we should wrap this up. Glove box is back in. Make sure, don't forget to attach the little, uh, I guess, tether thing here. It just kind of goes, hooks around, snaps in. Not a big deal. Pins, just line up the hinges and push the pins in um, outward, inward for both. Verify that everything closes. You have no interference with any of your wiring. So uh, that's good. Now, the trouble, <laughs> probably the most troubling uh, portion will be getting this bottom panel back uh, into place and then getting the four screws on there especially the one i had the issues with the back uh one in inner side here just hardly any room and it's super awkward so i'm gonna go ahead and get this thing hopefully put back in place if i don't come back then uh, i probably have died underneath my dash bottom panel is back in place and that was uh yeah not fun you can see I was sweating and pretty much dying in here, uh, 104 or so, plus being con contorted into this tiny place upside down. Uh, yeah, so the front screws are pretty easy. Back ones are nightmares. So remember where those are when you remove this because you have to feel your way to get the screws back in place and be super careful. Do not drop your screw because you will lose it into the carpet and then you may have to uh, uh, have a little search and rescue for your screw to retrieve it. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and hop back into the driver's seat over here and we'll take a look at how it looks with everything put back together. And also noted, I did put the end cap here, it just snaps directly in. Just make sure you do have the plastic tucked behind the trim, the weather trim right here. And uh, not, it does not sit over top of that. So you wanna kind of tuck it in and then uh, snap it inward this way to snap it into place and you should be good to go. Back inside the driver's seat, taking a look once again at the footwell lighting. Here's my tore up feet now. I got friction burns on the top of my toes, dragging them across my Swiss tracks tile as I was contorting myself into the passenger compartment over here to get this stuff installed. So uh, yeah, I'm in some pain now but you know, all for science. So I, I threw down a, a white microfiber over here just to kind of give a, kind of just showcase the illumination. Uh, this is my garage fully lit. I'm gonna close the garage up, turn off my garage lights, and then we're gonna take a look and just see how bright it is. It's not super bright. It's supposed to just be some accent lighting. Some people are complaining about the brightness, but it's not supposed to be glowing out, like, you know, distracting you as you're driving very much. It's supposed to give you a subtle glow and blend in with everything else and, uh, you know, Here's everything linked. So here's the color changes. And uh, I hardly ever mess with this. I guess there's a demo mode maybe. Here we go. I guess this will do something. I'm not sure what it'll do for demo mode. Uh, I guess it just kind of rotates through a number of colors. Pretty cool. Back to the uh, lovely feet over here. And uh, yeah, so everything seems like it's working. I think the drive mode is what I normally run it on. Anybody not familiar with spectrum lighting, you can actually uh, you know, disable it if you don't want. Um, yeah, it just turns it off completely. Turn it on. You can link it to drive mode, or you can just pick a color. So if we want to do like a two-tone, you know, it's supposed to then here give you a nice blend, a blended color, uh, you know, green to blue. And this links everything through, but I guess, um, you know, the footwell isn't going to be two-toned. It's just actually going to be one solid color. 
so it'll be closest to whatever color here is on the uh, uh, most front portion of your spectrum lighting is the color it's going to be the footwell so i always just do drive mode because i'm pretty lazy and uh yeah so that's it and i'm gonna go ahead and shut these lights off uh clean up everything we'll take a look real quick back in here and i'll show you how it looks when it's um, you know not so bright in my garage i have super bright leds so it's kind of carry on into the car so it makes it harder to see everything so we'll we'll go ahead and shut those off in my darkened garage it's kind of hard to hear me i have the exhaust running i'm only had the garage door down for a minute with the car running but i just want to show you the transfer of the lighting so you open it up you get your entrance lighting it's nice and bright white so you can see what you're doing hop in and then it slowly fades well kind of drastically but cuts off the, your entrance lighting and then you're left with just your um, spectrum lighting it's pretty dark in here it's not pitch dark but I mean can it give you a general idea what it'll look like maybe in a parking lot so it's pretty bright um, you know it doesn't radiate outward it illuminates what's in there so don't expect a splash of powerful overwhelming light to pour out under the seats it only lights up and accents pretty much what's in the footwell you know, your feet or any object so it just gives you that little extra uh pop and then you know we'll go over to track mode and then we'll do touring so it definitely looks pretty good it's pretty sharp and once again i will throw it back into demo mode and you can just see as it transitions uh, through the various colors it def definitely transitions um, quicker than the door panels and other spectrum lighting i guess it because it has less color palette i think it's only 24 colors versus the spectrum has millions so it's more of a drastic boom 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 versus a nice wave through the colors uh 100 in sync with the door so just keep that in mind it's not going to be uh, perfect through all the different color transitions now here it looks pretty good but some of them it seemed like it was real sharp um but here it looks like it's definitely a lot smoother so i don't know if that's this initial when you first throw it in a show mode or not but now it seems like it's flowing a lot better than right when i first kicked it in but it is see when it does some of the colors it's kind of a drastic on off versus the flow um of the seamless flow so just uh, keep that in mind that will wrap up this video uh as usual sorry it ran a little bit longer than expected but i wanted to get as detailed as i could uh to help maybe anybody else uh get ready to do this install and not letting the dealer handle it and uh, really like i said the only trouble areas were that uh, under panel under the passenger side those four bolts are just a nightmare it is four bolts some people have said they've only had three but there are four bolts you won't be able to drop that panel down completely which will make your job uh even more difficult and uh also um i actually referenced uh some posts i found on the camaro 6 forums uh and also a video i found by i think it was greg i'll put the link to the post and his video uh in there uh, his video is pretty good it's on, on the basics but it does jump around a lot and that's why i kind of want to make this video to really just get in more detail for anybody who maybe wants a little less um, guesswork and a little bit just more in depth on exactly uh, what to do where everything is and maybe a little bit more helpful but uh, definitely check out his video as well the, uh, i believe it's his post as well and uh yeah if you uh, like this video feel free to you know hit the like button uh subscribe uh, you know share if you're super bored and uh, i have a bunch more videos coming for the car eventually i'm gonna get the carbon fiber stuff out here finished it's just been so freaking hot i mean here's for reference and it's already cooled down a little bit so it was a high of 104 today uh feels like 106 i believe it said it's gonna be 108 or something like that in a couple of days so it's been uh, you know a little discouraging to get out into my garage and do this stuff but i also have a video for anybody who's, who watches any of my uh garage or home videos i do plan on insulating the garage door but that won't help that much if i actually have to open the door because as soon as i do that it'll be hot in here again but maybe just some of the initial heat in the morning it'll help with that and uh eventually you know ductless ac which will be amazing and i won't feel like i'm about to die because i think i almost or may i have died 
in my passenger compartment for a short period of time because yeah i mean i was just it was bad so uh yeah so really i liking the look of it it's not overwhelmingly bright maybe it could be a little bit brighter but you know it's a gm oem thing so they're not gonna make it amazing uh, but really it is kind of a pain and it should be just it should just come standard installed in the car i mean come on how much money is gm making from this add on it's just ridiculous shouldn't be a dealer uh installed part it should be installed with your spectrum lighting just by default that's just my thought on it and uh you know if you have any thoughts or or experiences with this install feel free to leave it in the comment and uh yeah i'll catch you guys on the uh next video peace